I'm doing at the school and maybe why I'm doing stuff at the school. Uh, Louis Bear is widely considered to be the uh, first uh, farmer in the country and somewhere down the line, great, 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 great uncle. Uh, my mom's side is Bear, so I always say, I guess farming has always sort of been in the blood. Um, growing up, we always ate in season. We always ate real food. The months staying at home, we always had real meat meals. Uh, we used to rent uh, food out, uh, plot out uh, outside of uh, Sarnia, and we would farm, probably about a quarter of an acre, maybe a fifth of an acre. And we would harvest through the summer, and we would can, and we would fruit things, and we'd freeze things. We always did. And I remember very, very vividly. So um, when I went to, to, uh, to uh, college for uh, cooking, I went to Stratford Chef School. And it's a private school. It's probably one of the better schools in the country. Um, and my main thesis at that school was called uh, Don't Panic, Eat Organic. So it just always made sense, right? And this is going back 20 years ago. And at that time, it was just sort of the soup or in a day fortune that we're doing local. And you know, it was Alice Waters that started it all. No one was doing local then. Um, you know, like I you read there, right? You know, I just shake my head. People are using Chilean sea bass, New Zealand lamb, and I was always cooking in my backyard what was around and and what was in season. Just some press, a lot of words there, just when I lived in Ireland, just some press talking about, you know, using stuff around and using stuff in season. So it's some more stuff there. Um, went back to Sarnia and people just didn't get what I was doing. I don't know if you know Sarnia, but they call it the armpit of Canada. It's Chemical Valley. It's the first place where uh, oil was found in the world and it used to be where all the big refineries were. So it's a real working man's town. And uh, there was one decent restaurant there and I just thought it was time to go home. Most of the family lives there and I just, I was there for about a week and I'm just like, oh, what am I doing? So, you know, I had people annoyed with me that I had taken off farm-raised salmon. Uh, I got a friend there that's been, uh, fishing uh, five generations over 115 years on Lake Huron with day boats, right? So pickerel, chard, sturgeon at the time, and I love to fish sturgeon anymore. So I was getting this kind of fish and people were just annoyed with me that I took farm-raised salmon off the menu. I knew I was in trouble. So um, I still wanted to cook. I still wanted to be in kitchens. And you know, sort of what was my favorite thing to do was teaching. I really liked to teach in the kitchen. When I was in Ireland, I had apprentices and uh, students from all over the world. So it's something I really, really enjoyed. So uh, I went back to University of Western Ontario uh, and I got my teaching certificate and I applied and accepted for this job even before I graduated. And so that's me. There are high school cafeterias, that was then. This is now, that's us. That's GISSS, that's our logo. This is sort of our uh, mandate, sort of our theme, sort of our logo, this is what we're about. Cooking is about teaching, it's passing the knowledge of recipes and science from one generation to the next. Teaching not just how to get more information, but also how the information is received. Cooking involves not just thought, ingredients and measurements, but passion, dedication and inspiring creativity. The GIS culinary program prides itself on the importance of educating students on healthy food choices, cooking choices, and taking an active role in our greenhouse and garden. There are my girls. Uh, they just graduated. They've been with me for four years, and we'll talk about them a little bit later. It was just a snapshot, right? We cook. It's what we do, right? I know some culinary programs don't run the calf. Our program at the school runs the calf. So we cook all morning, we serve, then we clean up, and then we do our theory classes as well. So, you know, you've got kids just harvesting and, and cooking with, with stuff there. So when I got out here, the first things I did was rip up the deep fryer. wasn't very popular. Um, out of the solid bar, and I got rid of paper plates and plastic tableware. You know, important. You gotta, you gotta feed kids with real plates and real food and real cutlery. I don't, I don't buy this plastic. I don't buy this paper stuff. Uh, plate presentation is very, very important. So, um, the kids got over the deep fryer. We've survived. So they realized that roasted baby potatoes are just as nice. Um, so I wanted to buy more local. This salt spring's weird for, for local. It's one of the few places that local ingredients may not be cheaper. Um, it's pricey here. There's sort of a, a gourmet market for um, the market here on the Saturdays and, and, and food's expensive. Uh, I try and buy local but it, it, it's expensive, right? Strawberries are sort of seven dollars a pint to, to give you an example. Um, Free-range organic eggs are sometimes six, sometimes seven dollars a dozen. So it's tough to buy local on the island. Um, 
people have supported me definitely, but um, it's just it's it's hard right now when you're charging five dollars a plate. So the garden had been dead for six or seven years before I got here. So we brought it back to life. There are some boys helping me bring it back to life. Uh, those seeds, it's certainly neat. They've just been growing and <laughs> seeding the plants themselves for five or six years. So we grabbed them and planted them and away they went. So, um, and that's, so I wanted more. And the only way I guess I knew how to make more was, you know, through cooking and through fundraising. So since I've been here, this is my sixth year of teaching. We've generated over $90,000 now. Just not school funds, not where we make money from day to day, but outside of school time. So I would say maybe 10, possibly 15 are from small grants, but I've given up on writing grants. No one listens to what I have to say. And so, uh, and I've got a few, and Aaron, you know, uh, farm to school, right? They've given me a bit, and PAC has given me a bit, but like farm to cafeteria, they had those big grants last year. They just snubbed me, which is just, I couldn't believe it, but I'm not going to pick on them. Um, but yeah, I've applied to lots of big grants. I'm just not going to do it anymore. They're just like, sorry, and I just, I don't get it. Because I think I'm sort of a step ahead of just the garden. And I think with some big grants, we could show how farther you could go just with the garden. But that's my own opinion. So with the money, there, there's the base for a greenhouse. We built a greenhouse. Um, it's really important to get people involved in the community to help. So those two gentlemen were there for a week and they didn't take a penny for putting up the greenhouse. So the one fella is um, one of my EA's husband and the other guy just knew someone that knew someone and he just he came for like a week and he put this thing together. He used to have huge, huge hydroponic systems out in Alberta. I tried giving him money, you know, wouldn't take it. I finally bought him bottom wine and then he thought it was silly that I wasted wine on him. So if you can get people to mentor, that's the thing. So that's inside. That's the beginning of the hydroponic system. There's Jane. Jane supplies me all my nutrients, everything, knowledgeable. She's just, she's amazing. Her greenhouse is about the size of a football field. It's unbelievable what she does on the island. She's got avocado trees, lemon trees, grows turmeric in a greenhouse, coffee. It's just nuts. And her hydroponic system in it. So there's another person that just really, really helps all the time. Uh, put some raised beds in. Um, yeah, I still wanted more and I still want more. Um, that's, I, I rent a small cottage on a five acre farm. So they've got a tunnel about maybe an 80 foot tunnel that they don't use. So the last two or three years we grow our tomatoes, our cucumbers and peppers. And that's just some of the kids out on a Friday harvesting. That's it up and going. That's just a cute tomato. That's my pumpkin patch behind, behind my house. There's a little harvest of it. We work with people, so those pigs there, we buy two pigs, three pigs, we pay for some food, we pay for the slaughter, but uh, they don't charge six or seven dollars a pound, right? We, we get the pigs and then we send all our compost down to help feed them. And they're all filled on the way from some of the cheese places here on the island. But some of the, some of the challenging, they can't have avocado, they can't have coffee, they can't have chocolate, so that's, that's tough going sometimes because not every in grade nine is, you know, I think separating coffee from the other complex is the most important thing in the world. Uh, there's a living basil wall. I took it down. I never had too much success with it and uh, it was in the calf, but I've got some other things there instead now. And I took it and I put it into the greenhouse. So now it's pretty neat. It's, it, it's taken up space. It was never used before. And uh, it was just down the lighting. I just didn't have enough lighting and I didn't want to spend a few thousand dollars for LED lights, which I figured it was going to cost. We grew our own sprouts. There's our aquaponic system. So aquaponic is just the next step from hydroponics. So with hydroponics, the, the, the things in the background, uh, and you'll see more on that, they, they live in water, right? And then you put nutrients in, and you just adjust the nutrients. And basically the nutrients in the water are the exact nutrients you'd see in good growing soil. Aquaponics is the introduction, introduction of fish. So then you feed the fish, and then the fish waste. That's the easiest way to explain it, feeds the plants. There was no composting and recycling before I came here. It was all thrown in the garbage. So we've got vermiculture there. We've got jar composters there. And I still can't keep up. I spend $300 a month to take compost off the island. I've tried with farmers a few times, but it goes for maybe a week or two or maybe a month or two, and then it just sort of falls out. It doesn't seem to carry on. We put composters all through the school. So the culinary program takes care of composting throughout the school as well. There's the bed for the fish. And then here maybe just some pictures. There's our salad bar. The salad bar's been up and going for, I guess, since I've been here. So it's a huge success. It's busier than our hotline. The kids love it. Um, 
I don't know if I can speak for every school district how popular it is, but I know when I went and visit Rowan last year, um, he wasn't having too much success with that at the time. And so he'd been trained with me, like he mentioned. So I think he thought he'd just go in there and put this and, and bam, and maybe it's caught on, but I haven't talked to Rowan a little bit. So um, we've taken out white sugar. That's my biggest fight right now is I don't like sugar at all. This stuff's better, but it's lesser of two evils. Um, once your body eats sugar, your body doesn't know the difference. The only thing with those, they have a few more nutrients and they break down slower, so your sugar liver doesn't spike as much. But they're not the answer either. I really, really don't like sugar. There's some home cured bacon that we make. We have a smoker. Um, so those lambs are raised from us, from Dave Astle. So we get three or four lambs every year. And I make the kids, you know, we don't kill, but we butcher. So um, if you're a strict vegetarian or a vegan, you don't have to watch. But any kid that eats a hamburger on the weekend, watch this. So that's just butchering, breaking down some lambs there. That's a cow. Um, grind your own meat. There's a pig that's raised for us again. So we do all this stuff, right? Cook from scratch. Um, here's some pictures. This is the food we cook. There you go. There's like a root veg puree, local lamb with a real jus, uh, chimichurri sauce on beef, ch cheddar cheese polenta. Like we don't do fries, we don't do hot dogs, we just we don't do stuff like that. Lamb calf to meatballs, braised kale, sticky brown rice, coconut curry sauce, homemade Vietnamese pho, crispy chicken leg, um, waffles, gardens from the greens, twice cooked duck wings, duck wings noodle salad, duck roam broth. Um, this one's just showing some plate presentation. We've got some uh, rolls there, pickled vegetables, then the salmon, and then we've got some. Uh, Pearls, so um, uh, wasabi pearls, and I forget what the other ones are now. Um, vegetarian, baby reds, chimichurri sauce, roast curry, cauliflower, and tomato salsa. Those plates are expensive. Those plates are about 25 bucks a pop. Um, kids bring them back though. We'll make sure that they take them around. It was just a piece of meat. They made a you know, real Montreal smoked meat that took about two weeks to make that. So uh, it's really important to show kids, right? What real food is, and I, I strongly believe in that. So yeah. We don't use vegetable oil, we don't use margarine, we replace with the moderation. We do coconut oil, we do sustainable palm oil, we do butter. I mean, if you look at the food guides, we're not supposed to use butter. I don't care. I mean, you're going to butter, you're going to have margarine. It's sort of a, you know, a no-flow to me. Um, I don't like vegetable oil, oil, I don't like canola oil. And so we use sunflower oil and we use avocado. Even the avocado, we use the avocado a lot in the baking, right? And it's expensive. It's really, really expensive, but that's some of the fats we use. If we do you know, chocolate chip cookies or, yeah, I don't know. But we use a lot of avocado for bacon. So we're taking the white sugar out. And again, the sustainable palm sugar, the coconut sugar, honey, maple syrup. These things are expensive, right? Maple syrup, you know, at Costco is like 16 bucks a liter. I mean, you know how much white sugar I can get for 16? So I got to break even. So, and it's sort of interesting. I got an email from one of the cook instructors, you know, asking just yesterday, you know, what are the costs uh, to run your programs in school districts? So, one of my things is I get no startup fees at all. I start with zero. And um, so, I mean, how do, you, how do you justify having maple syrup when you charge, you know, 50 cents for a cookie? So, and again, so back to the garden, you know, what do you do with the garden in the summertime? You know, two of the main negatives of gardens and school gardens, most of the produce is in the summer months. And you just, I've seen so many school gardens filter out after a couple of years because just no one wants to deal with it after the novelty's worn off. So I got a good bunch of girls, about six or seven, I call them my girls that are, you know, they're funny. They're all in university now. Not one of them are going to be a cook. None of them are going to be a cook. They just like my class. But um, so these are the five or six that raised most of the money with me. And so what did we do? We created salt spring salads. That's their logo. They created that logo. That's them. That's our truck in the summer months. Uh, Casey, Lauren, Molly, Kalista, and JJ. And there's a couple more, but those are my ringleaders there. And so we had money and we spent about $20,000 on the cart. And so what the cart does is that we use stuff from the garden, not all of it, but a fair bit of it, um, to sell as a salad truck as downtown. So that that's your list and you just put your name, you checked and we built it. And uh, it's awesome. <laughs> it's really, really good. And it worked. The girls were paid. Uh, they learned how to operate a small business, not just a kitchen, but any small business. They received extra work experience and 
we've made a lot of money doing it. So it's neat. Um, it's, it's really, really, really neat. There are some of the things. There's our big logo and our calf. We bought these things here with some of the proceeds from Salt Spring Salads. We have an urban cultivator that we grow all our small greens and starts and all that kind of stuff with as well. Um, this is my favorite thing we've done the last little bit. This is just putting a, 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 some a pipe on a fence that was doing nothing that you can see it in the background there. About 100, 150 heads of lettuce there. That grew four times over the summer. Lettuce is three bucks a head on the island. It cost me 300 bucks to put up. I love that thing. I think that thing was, that's my the favorite thing I've done since I've been here. It was so cheap to put up. It was easy to put up. And it's just, it's, it's amazing how fast lettuce grew in there. Um, okay, so I guess you got 10 or 15 minutes. You said I'll wrap her up. What are we doing? I don't know what we're doing, where we're going. Um, I've been to the, for, for two years, I've been trying to build a, um, an orchard and we meet about it every six months and then I'm, I'm told we'll get an answer and uh, I've never really received an answer. And uh, you know what? I think cooking is probably the most important course in the school, but I think with the new curriculum and the new core values, I think, you know, the school districts have got other things on their mind. So, um, and what I think is important, maybe, maybe they don't think is important, but um, with the orchard, I've got the um, Farmers Institute on the island. They had money put aside for me and whatnot. So I'm still waiting on that. Um, this is actually from last year, this, this, this year. So I have met, met with a fellow this last Christmas break. And he grew a lot of stuff for us, and he was really good. He sold us stuff for a buck a pound. And um, we need better storage on salt spring for um, root vegetables. But yeah, for a buck a pound all fall, I've been buying carrots, I've been buying uh, rutabaga, I've been buying fennel, all not certified, but all, all, all organic. So I mean, that, that guy's the champ. He, he, he loses money on me, he sells it to small grocery stores and makes some money, but he knows what I'm doing and he believes in what I'm doing, so that's great. And ultimately I wanna work with some more farmers, but it's just, it's, it's about that price point. So, some ideas, and these are probably, I'm not gonna do a super greenhouse. I would like to do an outside classroom. Uh, we got a flat roof, I'd like to do something up there. And again, they just sort of roll my eyes with some of these things. And I would like to buy a composter, a Jura composter. They're expensive, they're about $60,000. But they uh, take up to 800 pounds of compost a week and it's ready in three weeks. And so I spend $300 a month. That's something I'd like to buy. I'm also looking at trying to get permission to buy another uh, truck one that's more mobile so we can go to uh, weddings and whatnot. And so, um, yeah, I just, I think ultimately I want to teach kids how to eat. I don't have any facts or figures here, but it's, the estimated is somewhere between three and seven billion dollars in medical, you know, cost for food related diseases in the country. So I just think if you can get people eating properly, you know, from the get go, you know, there's a lot of money that is being wasted on, on trying to make people better you know, instead of being good by eating property, and that money could go elsewhere. But I just, I think it's really, really important. For the kids at the school, I don't run the culinary program for kids to become chefs. If they want, I'll help them along the way. But I mean, truth be told, it's not the most glamorous profession after the time you're 22 or 23. I'm working Friday nights till 11 o'clock at night, you know, gets a little repetitive after a while. But I mean, I want them to have real cooking skills and to understand like, smart choice choices like i'm always after them about choices i mean you go down those frozen aisles of the grocery stores they did not exist 50 years ago they weren't there all that frozen stuff did not exist and all that frozen stuff that's supposed to be fat free is full of sugar to make it uh, even edible i mean so you know trying to convince and teach kids you know i have a co-op that's across the store you know from three different schools here on the island you know that co-op it sells gas but what it really is it's just, you know, a money maker and selling junk food to kids and I hate that co-op. There is just a little, you know, the whole idea, we plant, we harvest, we cook, we compost, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Here's a cute video one of my girls made.
There's our Facebook page if you want to follow us. And like I said, it's really, for me, it's really important. I have a lot of ideas, but uh, I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. So if you can find someone, you know, the champion, your idea, it, it's been very helpful. There's been a lot of people on the island that have, have been really, really helpful. So 